Hello and welcome to the official introductory video for the Gizmap add-on for Blender. Gizmap is an deceptively simple yet powerful add-on for Blender that lets you adjust any materials mapping from within the 3D viewport. And that means that you can use the 3D location of the cursor on the mesh to update the location, rotation or scale of your material. So in the video description, I'm going to put a link to where you can get Gizmap. But in this video, I'm going to be giving a quick introduction to Gizmap. I'm going to show how it works and I'm going to give a few examples of how it can be used. And if you are a PBR Painter user, make sure to stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to show how Gizmap is seamlessly integrated into PBR Painter letting you control the mapping of layers, masks, or custom node groups without having to set anything up. Okay, so to get started, I think the best way to show how Gizmap works is to demonstrate it on a few different materials. So I've got a few materials in here that I've set up as examples, and I'm gonna start with this one, which is a very simple setup, and it's just the Blender logo with a couple of extra things. So this mix node is just masking the alpha to make it seem like it's a kind of decal. And then importantly, I've got this mapping node and a texture coordinate node. So this is feeding the UV information into the mapping node. And this mapping node is what Gizmap is going to use to actually control the location, rotation and scale of this image directly on this mesh. So once you've installed Gizmap, all you need to do is use the key binding, which by default is control, alt, and click. And you can adjust this in the preferences, which I'll show later in the video. But when you press control, alt, you'll see down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you have these different options to either translate, rotate, or scale. So I'm gonna start with translate, which is a left click. And then all you need to do is click wherever you want to on your image. It will add this vector gizmo that's then at that point that you selected and then you can just move your mouse around and it will just drag this around on the mesh so this is then dragging anywhere you want and it's doing this based on the uv map so if we put this down the front here we can then align this like this and then we can move directly across to the eye so even though the eye is a totally different uv island in this uv map gizmap is calculating exactly how to adjust the location in this mapping node to make that movement consistent with the cursor. So if we zoom in and then have a look at this mapping node, you see that when we move off the eye, that location actually jumps because that UV island is in a different space. So that location has to shift to make this seamless on the mesh. So this is really useful for decals because it means that you can just move this wherever you want without having to mess around with the location in here. Now in the same way, you can also rotate. And when you rotate, you do the same thing. You go control alt, and now we're gonna use the middle button. And when you do that again, it's gonna put an arrow on here and it's actually gonna use that as a pivot point for the rotation. So you can select any point that you want and it will rotate about that point. And the way it does this is it actually adjusts the location in addition to the rotation. So if you watch the mapping node as I'm doing this, it's actually adjusting that location at the same time. And this lets you do that really fine grain control over that rotation like that. So this is really useful if you wanna line this up. So for example, onto the eye and then rotate it without having to muck around with Blender's default rotation system. In pretty much the same way, again, if we move this off the eye, you can also change the scale. And again, you, it does that scaling based on wherever you select that cursor. So if I click over here and scale, it will scale around that position. If I just click in the center, it's gonna scale around the center or you can scale off like that and you can control exactly where you're scaling from. So again, really handy to have that fine control over placing your images on your mesh. So because we're just adjusting this mapping node, it means that you can have anything else connected downstream. So this is obviously useful in many different scenarios other than just adding an image to your model like this. So in this second example that I've got here, this is a PBR material, so it just has this series of PBR textures. And in this case, I've used the Node Wrangler add-on to just add these into my material. And these are controlled by this mapping node over here, which is again connected to this UV socket. So I can do the exact same thing and I can just click and drag however I want and control that mapping on the mesh. So I can grab a particular part of that material, so I can grab this part here, and then that movement will keep that attached to that gizmo. So if I wanna put that particular part on the eye, I can do that like that. And now it's actually placed that directly on the eye. And of course you can do rotation as well in the same way. And then you can do scaling as well in the same way. And again, this is scaling and rotating about the point that you select in that 3D space. So this is another really useful way that Gizmap can speed up workflows because whenever you have a situation like this, you can just quickly adjust that mapping in a really interactive way without ever actually having to adjust the values in your mapping node. And with that, I'm gonna move on to another example. And as I said, 
This is useful for more than just images because anything can be downstream of this mapping node. So in this case, I've got a very simple noise texture and I'm feeding this through a contrast node, which is just making the colors more obvious. So I can just do the exact same thing and I can just grab any part of that material and drag it to any other part of the model that I want to. So this is working in the exact same way. I'm just now using a noise texture instead of an image texture. Okay, so up until this point, I've only been showing how this works with UV mapping, and I've explained how this is doing calculations to figure out how to adjust these values based on where the cursor is on the mesh. But you can also do things like have object mapping. And what's actually happening is that Gizmap is detecting what is connected to this input, and it's adjusting its calculations based on that input socket. So now that it's an object input, it's going to adjust how it's doing the rotation, the location and the scaling to be consistent with that object mapping, which means that you can do the exact same thing, but now with that object mapping. So I can translate, I can also rotate, and when you rotate with object mapping, it uses the normal direction of that face, so the direction of the arrow, it uses that as the axis of rotation. So that means that you can control which axis you use to rotate your texture, whatever it is. And finally, with the scale, it's the same thing. It's just right click in this case, and this is just changing the global scale of that mapping. And to explain how this is working, as I said, Gizmap is detecting what the input is, and what it does is it looks for a socket called UV, and if it finds UV, it then uses UV mapping, otherwise it uses this object mapping. So that means you can have something like a UV map here connected, and that will still use that UV mapping like that, but you can have a different UV map in here, and this will be reflected in the calculations that are done within Gizmap to make sure that that location and rotation is all correct for that different UV map. And again, just to reiterate, you can have any complex node setup that you want in here. It doesn't have to be this simple noise texture. The main point is that we're just controlling this mapping node. So however you want to use that mapping node is up to you. You just have direct control over it from within the 3D viewport. Okay, so now I'm going to go through a couple of other scenarios that you might face and show exactly how Gizmap is going to work within these other scenarios. So one is when you have this situation where you have multiple mapping nodes like this. So in this situation, it's ambiguous which mapping node that Gizmap should use because what Gizmap is actually doing in these previous scenarios is that because there's only one mapping node in here, it automatically finds it and it does that linking for you. So you don't have to worry about selecting it or anything like that. It knows that there's only one mapping node, so it's going to use that single mapping node. But if you have two and you try to use Gizmap, you'll get a warning saying there's multiple mapping nodes and that you have to please select one. So this is then as simple as just selecting the mapping node that you want. And then that will link to Gizmap in this way. So now I'm controlling this one and I can rotate, translate, do all the normal stuff. And then I can select the other one and then I have control over that one as well. So again, really useful and really quick when you're interacting with many different mapping nodes and you want to control that mapping interactively like this. The other scenario that you might face is when you're using a node group. So in this scenario here, I've got the same noise texture set up as I had earlier, but now it's within a node group. And what's gonna happen in this case, if you don't have that node group selected and you try to use Gizmap, it's going to do the same thing it tried to do earlier, which is, is it's going to try and find a mapping node, and it's going to say no mapping node found. However, if you select that node group, it will then do that same calculation within that node group, and it will look for a single mapping node in that node group. So we can select that and then do the same thing. So now it's working as if that node group was this base node tree. You can also go into that node group, and Gizmap will recognize that we're now inside this node group, and it will then do the same thing and automatically detect that mapping node. And again, if you have multiple mapping nodes inside a node group, you can just select one and it will do the exact same thing as it did for that previous example. And this is just to add extra flexibility to the add-on and allow you to do more things with it. Okay, so that covers pretty much all of the functionality of Gizmap. As I said, deceptively simple because it's very easy to use. It doesn't require any setup, but it gives you a lot of power in terms of how you can interact with your textures and control how they are mapped onto your mesh. Final thing I'm going to go through in the video is I'm going to show how Gizmap is set up to be seamlessly integrated into PBR Painter. If you don't know what PBR Painter is, that's okay. I'll put a link to that in the description. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump across to the workspace, the PBR Painter workspace. And I'm going to go to this sixth material here. And this is again something I've set up earlier. And this has just got a couple of different layers. And what I'm going to show is that you can use Gizmap directly in PBR Painter without setting anything else up. All you have to do is have a layer selected. And if you're using an image texture for that layer and you have this mapping control down here, 
When you use GizMap in the same way, it will just automatically detect that you're in that layer and it will just apply the mapping to that layer specifically. So you can see it's adjusting the location down here like that. So this will work for any PBR textures or a PBR decal, which is what I've got in this example here. So we could, for example, control the concrete underneath. If we wanted, we just have to go to that layer and we can move it around. But in addition to that, you can also use it with masks directly. So I'm going to go to this last example here. And in this example, I've got a couple of different masks added to this layer. And with that mask selected, assuming the mask is compatible in the sense that it has this mapping, I can then just use Gizmap again and I can control that mask directly. So I'm now moving a gradient mask across the mesh like that. And I can rotate, change the scale like that, whatever I want, just by selecting that mask. I'm not going to go into detail about the logic and how this is all working because I'm going to do that in another video specifically for PBR Painter. But just know that you can have this fine control over different aspects of your layers and masks using Gizmap like this. So we can also control the procedural effect in this case in the same way. So this is now using object mapping and Gizmap is again identifying that. And that's going to let me rotate and translate and scale that however I want. So the overall effect is that you can have fine control over all of your different masks in your stack in here like this. And this is going to work with smart masks as well and also image textures in the same way that it worked with image textures previously. So for example, if I had this rust mask like this, and I preview this one, I can grab that and move it around however I want, or I can rotate it and do the exact same thing that I would do normally using nodes. Finally, you can also use Gizmap within a custom nodes layer. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but again, I'll do that in a separate video. All right, one last thing I need to cover in this video are the add-on preferences for Gizmap. So if we go into edit preferences, and then we find the Gizmap add-on in here under add-ons, you'll see that there are a couple of different things that you can change in here. So number one, you can change the gizmo type. So by default, it's an arrow, but you can set it to something else. So for example, if we have axes, that's gonna look like this. And you can also adjust that to other options as well. It also offers the option of changing the scale sensitivity. So when you're right clicking and scaling it, that's gonna change how quickly the scale changes. So you can change that if you want to. And then finally, you can change these key maps as well. And this is basically how the translation and rotation and scaling happens in 3D space. So you can adjust these to whatever you want based on your own preference. Anyway, with that, I'm going to leave the video there. Thanks for watching, and I'll hope to catch you in another one. Cheers.